Paul, this is a gorgeous airplane. What's this one called? This is our Dakota Hawk aircraft. And uh, it was originally designed and uh, flown first time around in 1994. Uh, and right now we have about 110 kits out there. Uh, there's a little less than 30 flying, there's 29 flying, but I got word uh, last week that the 30th is about to start its test flights. Now, this airplane, is it an all wood airplane like uh, your others? Yeah, it's just like all our other aircraft. It's all wood. The, the wings are the typical geodetic design. Uh, the only difference on, on this aircraft, and it's true of the Tiger Moth and the Celebrity as well, is the fuselage itself is not geodetic. For the strength uh, to hold a, a four-stroke engine in it, we've gone to a Warner Truss system in the fuselage, but it still is all wood. Now, this airplane then, how much would somebody have in an airplane like this, ready to fly? Uh, this aircraft was actually built by a customer of ours. This is the first uh, customer built flying aircraft that, uh, of the Dakota Hawk that we had. And a gentleman named Tom Marson put it together. And we ended up acquiring this aircraft from him uh, when he decided to retire from flying at age 80. Uh, we ended up uh, getting this aircraft from him. And uh, he had $26,000 in the aircraft, uh, complete as it is right now. With engine and everything? That's with engine and everything. Now this is what a little bit like what we were talking about earlier. To get a less expensive option on the engines, this has a uh, uh, Continental 85 horsepower that was taken out of uh, a Cessna 140 and then rebuilt. And so our engine cost on this aircraft was estimated at around $7,000. I mean, you got people that will spend more than that on just an engine. That That is absolutely correct. And that's one of the uh, things we try to address is, is affordability of flying. Now, with this engine in it, would it still have the performance of, say, a 912 or something like that? It does. Uh, you know, the 912, which is what this aircraft was originally designed around, uh, produces a slightly lighter aircraft. When you go with a, a Continental, you're ending up with a little bit heavier uh, aircraft. So you lose a little bit of useful load, not too much, but a little bit. Uh, but the performance on a 912, you're going to get the same cruise speed, you're going to get the same stall speed, same takeoff speed. The climb rate is a little bit better with a, a 912. And what would those figures come in at? Well, typically you're going to cruise in and around 100 miles an hour in the aircraft. Uh, full throttle this aircraft will go 120 miles an hour, no problem. You're stalling in around 34, 35 miles an hour. So a nice slow stall speed, nice general stall speed on it. And you're climbing at, uh, depending whether you're, you're solo or uh, two people, you're six to 800 uh, feet a minute uh, climb rate. And what kind of range would somebody have? Like how much fuel is on board and, and how far do you think they could go with it? The, the standard kits come with a 12 gallon header tank in it uh, as uh, the standard and then you can add two optional uh, six gallon wing tanks to, to bring you up to 24 gallons. So with this aircraft, you've got maybe 350, 400 mile uh, range depending on uh, what your weather conditions are. Now, this airplane, if someone were to build it from, say, starting with plans, what kind of time would they be looking at? Well, to finish all the uh, the basic woodworking assembly, you're probably going to have 750, 800 hours in assembly uh, time, and then you're going to have your en engine installation, your covering, your uh, instrument installation. So you're probably about a thousand hours on this aircraft. Okay, and now we move into say one of your quick build kits. How much time would it, uh, are we looking at there? On the quick build, you're going to knock off uh, on a monoplane like this. You're going to knock off about 200 hours on a bi one of our biplanes. You're going to knock off another 50 hours just because all the ribs are, are built for you. So that repetitive rib process is done. Now these being wood aircraft, what type of suspension system do you have to use on it? Well, you have a couple options. The standard uh, gear that's on our aircraft is the traditional bungee gear. Uh, so you're using the bungee cord and it's giving you a nice progressive uh, uh, shock absorption into a landing. That, uh, that's the same system as they'd be using on a Cub? Exactly, like on a, on a J3 Cub, it's the exact same system. So it's been around, it's tried and it's true, uh, and uh, it, it's a great option. Some people complain that there's a little bit of maintenance required every couple of years, you have to change the bungees out. Uh, so we offer, offer an option which is a spring replacement for the uh, gear, which has basically, it's inside the uh, canisters here, but it's uh, two die springs on each gear leg that uh, are, are are going in compression and it gives a nice progressive uh, uh, landing uh, absorption again without the maintenance that you have on a, uh, a bungee gear. And the third option is you can actually get Grove gear uh, for these, so a, a spring steel gear that you'd see on a 172. Uh, we have that option available as well. Now, brakes, uh, braking wise, is there a standard braking system or is there something that you uh, offer or, or would prefer? Yeah, well, the, the kits actually come with your wheels and brakes already included. The Dakota Hawk 
comes with uh, Matco wheels, Matco hydraulic brake system, Matco uh, tail wheel as well. So that's all included in the kit. Now this is a real roomy cabin you've got here. Yeah, it's uh, you know it's a nice wide. It's 38 inches wide in the cabin, which uh, being a bench seat gives you a lot more room than a lot of people expect. Uh, Height-wise, we've had uh, up to a five foot six uh, uh, tall passenger in here, no problem. Uh, so it is a very nice roomy cabin. Now this looks like it would be a nice float plane, especially with these doors that you've got. Yeah, we actually have one Dakota Hawk on floats, and uh, you know that uh, you're correct about the doors in that they fold. You know, they're a split door again like a cub so the top you know you can bring it up like this and you can actually fly with the, the window open uh, you just have to change the attachment up on the, the spar here so that it holds it snugly in, in flight but the doors basically come down like a clamshell so it's easy in and out access uh, on the airplane and uh, one of the other nice features on the Dakota Hawk is the strut attach is actually behind the seat. So you've got a nice forward view with, uh, while you're in flight. And we have a number of people who are using this as a uh, photographic aircraft. So they're doing in-flight photos with it. And you get great visibility out of the airplane. And I notice you're using streamlined struts on it as well. We are. Those are standard with the, uh, with the kit. That uh, They are structural streamlined uh, 6061 uh, aluminum and very light, very strong, and they actually do a great deal to reduce the drag in the aircraft. Okay. Now, you've got dual controls on this. Are they using it in a training environment as well? Well, yeah, you definitely could train uh, in the aircraft. Uh, we actually have a number of customers who this has been their first aircraft that they built, and so they, they uh, learned to fly in the aircraft. But it comes standard with dual controls. Uh, the standard comes with uh, uh, single side passenger only uh, brake, but there's an option that you can put uh, brakes onto the uh, co-pilot side as well. It looks like you've got a little bit of storage there behind the seat as well. We do. You can uh, store up to 20 pounds of, of baggage in behind the uh, the uh, seat and uh, you know it's not uh, something you're going to pack a suitcase full and go away for a week, but it's a great for airplane for an overnight trip. So I take it this is just a standard instrument panel that comes with it? Uh, no, that, as we mentioned before the instrument panel is one of the the uh, things that is an option that the customer uh, basically puts together themselves and the logic behind that is every customer has their own choice of what, how they want their uh, aircraft to look some people want a full glass panel some people want traditional uh, uh, steam a gauges six pack, that type of yeah thing. and so this is fairly typical of what you'll what you'll see where we have the uh, the standard gauges we've got our engine gauges over here and with little panel mounted GPS in the middle and our Calm and a transponder uh, just under the dash, but it's it's a fairly typical layout. The uh, panel itself is fairly large, so you have a, 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 a nice open area for you to lay out your instruments. Now, are there any flaps on the airplane? The the kit comes with uh, with flaps, and this aircraft app happened to be built without the flaps. It was customer's choice that you can build with or without. Uh, the logic behind this one not being built with flaps is he was flying off of an old military base that had a 10,000 foot runway on it. Stall speed on this aircraft, clean is 34, 35, dirty is 32. He didn't see any advantage to building it, so he didn't. The one thing that he did lose in uh, not putting the flaps on it is the aircraft comes standard with a wing folding mechanism so that you can fold the wings back to store. And when you don't have the flaps in it, the wings don't fold. Oh. You've got folding wings on this airplane too. There are folding wings. The Dakota Hawk and the Horizon 1, Horizon 2 all have folding wing option. It's actually not an option, it's standard in the aircraft. And how long does that take to do? Uh, you're five minutes uh, to fold both wings. Basically, uh, the mechanism is mounted on this aircraft. You're going to pull a quick release pin out of each of the front spars. You're going to take a quick release pin out of your, uh, out of your aileron control, you reflex your flaps, and the wings rotate back around the rear spar and the strut attachment. So uh, the fuel tanks, I guess, are mounted in the wings? Yeah, you've got your main header tank in the front, which is your main feed for the engine. That's your 12-gallon tank. And then you've got two feeder tanks in uh, the wing. You can actually do one or two. Uh, a lot of guys with Rotax 912s will just put the single in the wing. But this aircraft happened to have both. They're transfer tanks. So uh, basically, you've got your, your fuel flow shutoffs here. You wait until you have enough uh, room in the tank to transfer, and then you're transferring from the wings down into the header tank. Uh, it's, it's a fully vented system, so you're not feeding directly from the wing into the uh, main tank at all times, but it's more of a transfer system. 
Okay, it's really easy to get in the aircraft. Just like that. And you're ready to go. And to uh, maneuver the aircraft on the ground, you get a lifting handle on the back that is really easy to move the aircraft and maneuver it around. So uh, to check the oil on the aircraft, you, we have the aircraft inspection plate. And so you can open it up and get full access into the engine, just like on a, on a typical production aircraft. Now, as we mentioned before, this aircraft has the uh, Continental 85 horsepower. You could also put a Rotax 912 in it. It has a different cowl that's got a little bit different air intake on it. Uh, but other than that, it's exactly the same aircraft. So how are you offering this airplane then to the public? Well, the Dakota Hawk, depending on, on which country in the, in the United States, this is an amateur build aircraft. Uh, in Canada, it actually can be flown as a basic ultralight or as an amateur build aircraft. So you've got, got a number of options in Canada. So if we want to get a hold of you, get a little more information, what's the easiest way to do that? Well, you can call us at Fisher Flying Products at area code 905-838-1050. Uh, our address is 13779 McLaughlin Road in Caledon, Ontario, uh, L7C2B2. Or the, probably the easiest way to get information quick is to go to our website at fisherflying.com.